Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Linda. Good evening, Kingdom Gate. God is good. I just like to jump right into my uh, my uh, text scripture. steps of a good man are, are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. This one's been brewing in me for a long time, a very long time. In 2017, um, we went to San Antonio to see my stepson and he wanted to do this thing where you go and climb up obstacles and ropes and you get higher and higher and higher and I don't like heights but I thought, that'd be cool we'll try that out let's check it out that'd be cool so I was excited I was ready to, to you know I was ready I was in I was all in so we got there and we went and paid our money to do this and we went and started getting all suited up and we had this vest thing that wrapped here and buckled there and clipped on this and tied onto that and I mean there was a million things that they had to do and it was heavy but they got it on us and here we went I was excited here I was charging up the first set of stairs had the handrails going all the way up first obstacle just all of a sudden stepped out on a platform there were no handrails there was nothing I was suddenly buckled I just I'm like, okay, this, this, I don't, I didn't do good with that at all. So I did what anybody else would do. I backed up against the pole behind me and worked my way around to the first obstacle. My security was all gone at that moment, folks. <laughs> so I got as far away from the edge as possible, got my breath, started on my thing. The excitement was still there, but the fear started coming in but I kept on going. And I went through the first level, and I was heading up. I don't even know. I lost track of my levels. All I know is at one point, I was hanging on to this thing with ropes and boards and laying against it, looking out over this. I, can, I could draw the scenery if I could draw. My muscles were burning. My heart was racing. I couldn't breathe. Everything I touched moved. Everything I stepped on moved. I was scared to death. And I had struggled to get so far. I was in a panic, and I still just wasn't getting this. How in the world had I been so excited with this? I, was just, I forgot all about how excited I was when I said yes. <laughs> I was ready to turn around and go back the way I came. It was hard. It was scary. The whole time that I was doing this, this thing was in my face. It was in my face this entire time. And I was pushing it out of the way so I could grab whatever I could grab. And I realized this thing was in my face. It was a tether. And I realized I've been fighting this the whole time. And I wasn't going to fall. No matter where I stepped, if it moved and it came out from under me, the worst it was going to happen, I was going to hang there for a second. But I was not going to fall. As long as I stayed hooked up and tethered in, I was not going to fall. And I thought immediately, immediately, that'll preach. <laughs> I should have seen Bible college in the future on that one, I guess. <laughs> And I don't even know if Drew remembers. I came home and was telling him about it, and he goes, only a preacher's kid would get a message in the middle of something like that. Of course, I finished the rest of my course holding on to that tether just like this. I mean, I wouldn't touch nothing else. I was holding on. I think I just turned it off. There it is. Okay. I didn't have a fear of falling anymore. I began to enjoy the challenge. It was still taxing, and it was challenging, but now I had a newfound confidence 
that if I stayed hooked in, I wasn't going to go anywhere. So going back to that time, we were so excited to say yes at something. God's salvation, we said yes, we were excited. When God started putting our first challenges to us, we were excited. We were saying yes, and that old song comes up, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say, and I'll do what you want me to do. Okay, we're going to do this. Let's go. Let's get suited up. Ephesians 6.11 tells us, we'll put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So this is what we've learned. Some of us have learned since we were little tiny kids in church. So let's get that on and let's go. And we start up grabbing handrails, whatever we can get our hands on, till when all of a sudden our security is gone. When you, have, you can be very secure when nothing is required of you. Do we only feel secure when God requires little or nothing from us? As long as we have some degree of control. Just even that much. Can we totally let go of it? When that first challenge comes, do we buckle? Can you bring up Joshua 1.9, please? Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. There's a promise right there. You can let go of the control that you want to have. He never said as long as you had something to make you feel more secure. He's going to be with you wherever you go. So we can be excited that first challenge comes out of nowhere. Did Peter have tangible security? In Matthew 14, 28 and 29, and Peter answered him, and we know the story. The seas are going, the guys are on the boat, they're scared to death. Jesus comes out on the water, they think he's a ghost. And when they realize who he is, Peter just, he, he gets reckless. He said, Lord, if, if it be you, be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come, down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Peter heard the voice of Jesus and decided to take that initial step out of the boat. Peter obeyed the call to leave the comfort of the boat and go out while a storm raged all around him. Just like Peter, when you choose to walk in faith, you choose to walk in the supernatural power from the kingdom of heaven. You are walking with the full knowledge that the Holy One is in con full control of the process. We don't need any control. He can't have full control if we're holding on to some. We have to trust that he's with us, leading us, and guiding us safely. And we know the rest. He took his eyes off of Jesus and started sinking. Jesus reached out and caught him. Reached out and caught him. When we get to that point where we're in this challenge or this... Um, assignment we have and it feels like everything we touch moves we need to realize something Isaiah 40 29 please he giveth power to the faint and to them that hath no might he increases strength sometimes we forget that when we're standing and we're sweating and we can't breathe and we're wondering how in the world did I get so excited to say yes to you, Jesus? Because right now, this is not fun. This is not fun at all. When we, we cannot just keep, we can't lean on what we understand. And just like that day, I was grabbing everything. I, I, I understood this rope was here. I understood that if I held on, I wouldn't fall. Well, that wasn't going to get it. You can't lean on what you understand. We have to, we got to know what's keeping us up. We're tethered into the master. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So our excitement can be quickly forgotten at that point. We forget how it felt to say yes. In First Timothy, or 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So don't turn around and quit. Don't, don't be afraid. Um, could I have Philippians 3, 13 and 14, please? Brethren, I count myself to be apprehended, but this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We can't think we're going to go back where we came from. Because here's something. To go back, you've got to go back through all that stuff again. Then one day you're going to remember there's that thing. that it, He was there all the time. He was right in your face. And you, we, we, we push him aside because we think we can do it. In Isaiah 41.10, says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen ye. Yea, I will uphold thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. There's that word uphold again. He's not going to let you fall. There is such a relief when you know this. When you finally realize, okay, if I just obey even if I mess it up, he's not going to let me fall. You can, you can actually get, well, reckless obedience. You, t- you don't have to worry. I mean, don't think about it. Don't overthink it. Don't analyze it. Don't worry who might get hurt because if you're obeying, God's going to make sure nobody gets hurt. You can get reckless in your obedience. So just keep holding on to that. You have no fear of falling. Enjoy this challenge. Embrace it. Embrace it. Because remember, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nothing is going to make him leave us. We're we're hooked in. Um, In Deuteronomy 31, 6 and 8, please. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not. There's going to be a lot of those. Nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail, fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, be dismayed. Those are two verses that are one away from each other. And he just keeps saying <laughs> Don't fear. So needless to say, this was kind of the object lesson to beat all object lessons for me because I was getting it the whole time I'm going through this. But I learned two more things. I want to share it with you. Before I, and once I finally got it. Once I could look around and see, hey, I'm not going to die. I could notice that other people were effortlessly climbing here and going there, little kids like spider monkeys. And I'm looking around, and it hit me. One of the fastest ways to discourage yourself is to compare yourself with others. God has a specific plan for you, and, and you're not going to accomplish that by looking at others. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He has his own plans for us. They're not everybody else's. He has his own plans for us. And the only time that you need to look at somebody else or can look at somebody else is when you see the testimony in their lives and you can think, if they can do that, I can make it. I live a living example right behind me pastor went through so many things very similar to what I was going through and in 2007 I looked at him and if he can get through it I can get through it that's the only time we need to look and and he helped me so when you see somebody behind you struggling let them know they can make it you can get here too and the last thing I noticed was on the very last level it was about a million stories of okay it was only four (laughs) I was walking on my last holding on Walking across my last one, and I was looking at the steps, and I realized I could see four stories down. And uh, the, it just that moment of buckling and stomach and everything. And all of a sudden, I mean, this was the coolest day, I'm telling you. It was like God said, just focus on that one right there. And it was like the hole underneath me went into a blur, and all I saw was my steps. You focus on those steps. Let everything else blur into the background. Had Peter kept his eyes fastened on Jesus, he wouldn't have sunk. So grab a hold of your tether. Get out there and just go. And that's the title of this message today. 
And I used, I, Howard, you were all over the say yes part. But the title of my message is say yes, hold on, and go. Walk by faith, not by sight. Nate, can you come here? In the end of a, a trial or any challenge or a, an, uh, an assignment from God, in the end we can give him all the glory. 2 Timothy 4, 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. We hear this scripture at funerals all the time. I have since I was young. Well, why can't we use this and proclaim it each and every time we finish something? That's not just a death scripture. So if we revisit our text of Psalms 34, 23 and 24, one more time, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand be confident when you're tethered into the master how do you stay tethered in study read your Bible pray come to church worship fellowship this is how you stay tethered in you start missing some of those, you're going to start unbuckling some of your tethers. You're not going to be near as safe as you were when you were doing all those things. He's going to keep you from falling. So act in reckless obedience. Just go for it. So my challenge to you tonight is exactly that. Say yes to what God wants you to do. Grab that tether and go. You're not going to fall. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to ask Reverend Elder Chris Rose to come to the pulpit. And I want to say this before he comes. I have never known a man of God to be more dedicated to his calling than the man that I'm about to bring to the pulpit. Never in all my life. And I've been in ministry for many years. Tonight, Brother Chris's son is in the hospital and he has left his husband there to be with Justin but he's here to keep an appointment in his ministry now everyone in this building knows that if brother Chris had called and said pastor we've had to rush Justin to the hospital and I'm so sorry but I'm gonna have to be there with him everyone in this this congregation right now knows that that would be perfectly appropriate and would have been fine. But there's something about the yes that Brother Chris said to the Lord. Maybe it's what he had to go through in all of those years to get to that yes. Because it means more in his life and his ministry than, than nearly anybody I have ever encountered. And so I want to say how much I appreciate this man of God. He is the head of our prayer department. He is anointed by God as a prayer chaplain. He's anointed by God as an elder in this church. And he has been anointed by God to preach. So, brother, come and bring the word that God has given to you. Thank you so much, Pastor. God had the word. God confirmed his word, Brother Lance. Pastor, thank you so much for the opportunity to preach. This is what I live for. I live for this. It means something. It looks like something. God put the fire shut up in my bones tonight to preach this word to you. It's important. The word of God is important. And the message that God's given to me to preach is important because it's about ready to set up July, our prayer revival. It is not insignificant that we are here together and that we're few in number 
but you can't because you have a desire to hear the word tonight. Pastor Linda, I want to welcome everybody to Wednesday night church. I want to welcome our YouTube subscribers. This is for you too. To Wednesday night church and this has been marinating in my spirit for a while. So it's getting all juicy. Let's get that. He's getting ready to serve some beautiful steak tonight. So in preparation for that, let's just thank him. Raise our hands and thank him. Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for what you've already done in this service. God, I thank you that I get myself out of the way. I, wanna, I want those to hear you. Everybody on the, under the sound of my voice to hear you, not me. Not me. But Lord, thank you. Thank you that we receive your word. We receive your engrafted word in advance. We say yes to the reception of your word. In Jesus' name. Now, my title, oh boy, is Be Strong and Courageous. Be Strong and Courageous. Hallelujah. Almost gave me exactly the scripture, and we'll go there right now. Joshua 1 and 7. And we need some context. Well, you're turning there. Moses is dead, okay? Old school is old school. Our old denominational ways are done. Our old ways of doing things. And Joshua was Israel's new leader. He was getting ready to lead the people of Israel into the promised land and God's getting ready to lead Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church into the promised land. Uh -huh. And let's read it. Only be thou strong and very courageous you don't have to look like you're strong. You don't have to act like you're strong. But you just have to stand on the word of God and know in whom you have believed because he's faithful. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And he never will. And he never will because he's faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be strong and very courageous. God is calling us, Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church, to be very courageous today. Today, in the middle of the trial, be very courageous. In the middle of what the devil is putting in your face, be very courageous. Don't back down. Don't back down. There's a personal reason why the Lord gave me that scripture because, saints, I've been standing on the word of God. I've been standing in the trial, but I ain't looking back. I'm, we're going through. I was going to testify that I'm going through. My family's going through. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what the doctors say. I know Dr. Jesus. And he's inside of me. And he's, this is the year of end time authority. And the end time authority is going to start to manifest in our services like never before. 
Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if tonight's any, just a little glimpse into what God has for us, as they say in the airplane, put your seat in the upright position, buckle that seat belt, and get ready to step into it. Hallelujah. That thou mayest observe to do. We have to observe to do according to all the law. We have to do according to the word of God. If we, we don't do according to the word, we're, we're, we're asking amiss. That's not in, in, in my message notes. But there's somebody that's been asking a miss. Allow for some course correction tonight. Okay? I'll ask him, okay, where am I asking a miss? Where am I asking a miss? Who cares what this old, old stupid flesh says? Because we can't perceive the things of God by the flesh. But we can perceive the things of God by our spirit filled with his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And in uh, second scripture is Second Corinthians. Chapter 12 and verse 9. And this was Paul, oh, brother Paul, who had the thorn in his side. And he was receiving from the Lord. And he said unto me, Jesus, my grace is sufficient for thee. Kingdom gate, his grace, his grace, his favor, his gifting is sufficient. And, 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 and that word sufficient is enough. He is enough. Somebody needs to receive that into your spirit tonight. He is enough. We don't depend upon the world system. Uh-huh. We're believers. We don't depend on the world. We depend on Jesus. We depend on his grace sufficient for the for dot dot for my strength my strength the strength of the Lord the strength that got him through the crucifixion come on the, the strength that got him through the crucifixion and the strength that got him through taking the keys from old Slewfoot. Uh, the keys of death, hell, and the grave. There was strength. And we have that supernatural strength, but it's not about us. It's not about us. No, we can't. Hey, if I tried to do it in my own strength, I'd be crazy. I'd be crazy. I would have been gone a long time ago. Come on. But God, but his grace is sufficient for me. It's enough. It's enough. Hallelujah. Is made perfect. The, the word, the, that phrase in the Greek is complete for my strength is made complete in weakness get a revelation of this where our flesh just falls and and can't do it oh my my grace his grace is sufficient for thee and his strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I can't talk about anything. 
regarding strength. Except we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts 1, 8. We need the Holy Ghost. But ye shall receive power. This is promise. But ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive the strength that you need. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. After. It's not going to be before. Because if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you don't have access to the same power. You don't have access. So if you don't have it, or if you need a refill, refills are free. Hallelujah. Refills are free tonight. Hallelujah. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, you can receive it. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I wasn't going to share this, but I have to. I have to. I just, I just feel uh, 2000, the year 2000, January 1st, I was, I was at a, a multicultural church. I mean, they didn't know anything about me, if you know what I mean. But the, the pastor there said, anybody who wants to come down, and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he's here. So I was in the second seat from the aisle. I step out, and then I didn't get any further. I didn't get any further because there was a hunger in me. God wants us to have that hunger. God wants us to have that hunger. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We go back to that. The hunger to, for everything that God has for us. For ruling and reigning, we can start now. That's what the year of end time authority is supposed to do. Getting us ready to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. When he comes back, because he's coming back again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I got, to, I got to dance. Oh, hallelujah. And another scripture, Ephesians 6.10. <laughs> hallelujah. Talk about confirming the word in Ephesians 6. My, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and then in the power of his might. My brothers, brothers and sisters, kingdom gate, be strong in the Lord and not on our own might and in the power in the power of his might hallelujah in closing let's turn to ephesians the sixth chapter the 18th verse amen and, and this is going to lead us into revival praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. We're going to stop there. Pray always. Pray always. It's that tether. Come on. Prayer is that tether. Uh -huh. You getting it? Prayer is that tether. We need communication with the Holy Ghost. If we're not praying, we're not receiving communication. If you're just standing there, oh, Jesus bless my day, and then go throughout your day and don't say anything else to him, is that the way we're going to treat our soon coming bridegroom? Is that the way we're going to treat our betrothed? Come on. Oh, yeah, that's that sank in. Hallelujah. In the spirit, we have to pray in the spirit because we don't know. Sometimes we just don't know how to pray. I've experienced that this week. Sometimes I don't I didn't know how to pray. But I said, Holy Ghost, 
I need you to pray through me. And that's how we're going to pray. Not just in here, but outside those four walls. When we pray outside those four walls, we'll receive the communication from the Holy Ghost. We'll receive the instruction, but that instruction requires a yes. It requires obedience. Those that are willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. For me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. That is the purpose for the prayer. How do I, how do I handle this situation? How, what words do I say? Holy Ghost. And for me, that utterance, that speech may be given unto me because it's not in here. It's not in this stupid flesh. It's not in that crazy flesh. But it's in, in the context of our relationship and our prayer because it's all prayer. All supplication for all the saints. We have to be praying for each other. That's a part of the unity of the spirit that God requires of us in this last day, in this last generation, for which I am an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I ought to speak boldly. No more meanly mouth. No more. Oh, do I step on eggshell? If I talk about the Lord, if I give a testimony, and you, oh, I'm going to break the egg. Well, the egg needs to be broken. Because we are supposed to speak boldly. Now, caution. We're not supposed to speak out of our flesh. But we're supposed to speak the mysteries of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the mysteries of the kingdom of God that God has entrusted with us. God has spent years and years and years giving us revelation after revelation after revelation. What are we doing with the revelations? What are we doing with the word that has been sown? Is, is there some... Uh, okay, is, it, is question. Is there some of the seed of the word that's partially sprouted. I, I feel I feel hmm, I, I feel that. I feel that there's somebody under the sound of my voice where the seed of the word has partially sprouted. And it's struggling. It's struggling to, to grow. It's struggling to grow. But hide that word. Honey, hide that word in your heart. That, 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 that we might not sin against him. Hide it. Study your word. Read your word. Pray. Worship. Come into the house of the Lord. Be in these prayer meetings. Because there's something about ready to get loosed in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. There's something. There's something. He's getting ready. Revival already happened over there. We just got somebody who received the baptism in Jesus' name. Oh, but it gets better. 
she was able to receive the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, the immersion in the Holy Ghost. And we need to pray for her. Amen. Can we pray for her? Let's pray for her because she, she needs that support. She needs that connectivity uh, with her church family, even though she's up in, in Flagstaff. So, so let's make a commitment to pray for all the saints. So that's just, even, even hmm, it blew my mind. Pastor, I, I had to watch it again. And, and I listened to it. I listened to it. I listened to her speak with other tongues myself. Hallelujah. She received the power of the Lord to strengthen her and to be very courageous. God, that, that same power is here. That same power is here. Do you feel the Holy Ghost here? Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. The promise, the promise of strength, the strength, the promise of courage rising up. Receive the courage rising up. Stand to your feet if you can. Stand to your feet if you can. And receive the courage to walk in the new things to walk in the supernatural, to walk in the strength of the Holy Ghost, to, to be strong and very courageous, not backing down from the Word of God, not backing down from the presence of God, not backing down from saying yes to every assignment, not backing down. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Enter in. Enter in. Enter in. Enter in, enter in, enter in, hallelujah. Take that first step, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 